another solution. So how can we, how can we possibly uh, take into account the influence of uh, basically, uh, how can we take into account the degree of a node and also the degree of its neighbor? So we want to define a centrality that of a, of a particular node that depends on the centrality of its neighboring nodes. And here we see we have a new definition and this is actually, this centrality was introduced to solve that problem and it's the Eigen centrality or the um, Eigen vector, we also call it the Eigen vector centrality. So this centrality, it accounts for both quantity, the degree of a node, and quality, the degree of its neighbors, okay? So all of you guys, I guess you are familiar with Eigen decomposition of a matrix, and we know that for a graph, the adjacency matrix is the most important uh, representation of a graph. So here, uh, by performing Eigen decomposition of the graph adjacency matrix A, we find it's a first principal Eigen vector, okay, with the highest Eigen value. Right. So this is, you know, generally a very simple definition of uh, Eigen decomposition. It means that when we have a matrix, just to remind very quickly, uh, when we have a matrix um, A and we multiply it by a vector, we get just, you know, the same, the output is the same vector, but it's scaled up by a factor lambda. And this is, you know, it means that this vector is an Eigen vector of A, and the associated lambda to this vector is its Eigen value, okay? Now, here we define the centrality, the Eigen centrality, CE, of a node VI uh, as the ith entry in the Eigen vector with the largest Eigen value of A. So here what we're doing um, is basically decomposing, uh, you know, like um, the matrix A, finding its Eigen vectors, right, and its Eigen values. We take the Eigen vector with the highest Eigen value that has positive elements, and then we take the element i, the ith element in the Eigen vector x. What does it mean? So here this is, you know, our decomposition, right? So we got our vector xi, x, right? This is the Eigen vector, and then we take just the ith value right here, and we divide it by the, uh, it's, we basically multiply it by the inverse of the lambda one, the highest Eigen value. So here this value is actually, that we find in the Eigen vector is the centrality, is the Eigen centrality of node VI. So I'll explain a little bit more. So here, how does it work? Let's look at this. So if you look at this, what we have generally for a simple binary undirected graph, we have the, this matrix, right? So we have matrix A, we multiply it by its Eigen vector, we get lambda 1 times x. And here, what we're doing, if you think about it, what we're doing is we're taking all the neighbors of node i, we're multiplying it by the Eigen vector, and then what we're we're looking for is this element xi. So this element xi, this value right here, okay, it depends on all, you know, the local connectivity pattern of this node i. And here, basically, this new Eigen centrality, it is able to endow each node with the highest centrality if it has many neighbors, which means it has a high degree, but it if also its neighbors are highly connected, which means that its neighbors have also a high degree or both, okay? So it applies to these three cases. And also, interestingly, also we can apply it to um, uh, weighted undirected graphs. So if the, the, the values inside A are positive, okay, then we can apply it to, un, to uh, weighted graphs. So it's generalizable from binary to weighted graphs. And here, let's look at this more, this example. So what we have here is that what if we are operating not on a, on a, on a directed, only undirected graph, but what if we have, well, let's say, okay, we still have uh, an undirected graph, weighted, but the weights can take negative values, right? And you guys know that this centrality, oops, that this centrality, 
we can only derive it, we can only do the eigenvector decomp eigenvalue decomposition, eigenvector decomposition if the values are positive in our adjacency matrix A. Now we have this graph and we still want to use the uh, CE measure, okay? So we want to apply it to this graph. So how can we possibly operate? How can we uh, ap still apply this to this graph? Any idea? So this graph has negative weights, right? Which means the adjacency matrix has negative values. And we still want to apply this decomposition that works only on positive values. What is the most intuitive solution? Yeah. Sorry? Absolute value. That's interesting. Yeah, that's an, an, a feasible solution. So basically, uh, what we can possibly do is like take the absolute value and remove all negative connectivities, okay? So this becomes a plus one and the other one plus seven, right? But here, it depends on what we want to do with the graph. If we want to preserve the polarity, if we want to preserve negative and positive, uh, then that's, uh, we might want to come up with another solution, okay? So taking the absolute value is a possibility. Another one is doing what we call shifting. Okay, so you just, you know, add maybe plus 7, you take this negative value, add plus 7 to uh, this, uh, the distribution of the weights, like to, to the graph, and like all values will be shifted and they will start from 0. Okay, so that's another possible solution. These are two simple naive solutions. If you want to apply a graph tool, uh, like, you know, like uh, Agen centrality to a graph with negative values. And there are many other heuristics and possible solutions. Yes? Uh, what does the negative weight represent in real it can represent anything. You need to think about it. For example, transactions depths. Uh, you know, like you need to think about. But it doesn't become a direct graph. Like right. You can use no, no. Sorry. Graph. Yeah, this is not. This is undirected graph, yes, but it but is weighted. It's weighted, but uh, if you put minus seven and you say if, if it's depth, then it's actually saying that B four is actually maybe. Or yes. B2, but then it doesn't become direct. Uh, no, no, it, it does not come uh, directed. That's that's right. What you're saying is that, oh, if we shift this distribution, uh, will it turn our graph to directed graph? No, we want to have an undirected graph. It's just uh, we want to find the, the central nodes, right? To find the central nodes, if we add values, right, if we just shift it, like, or take the absolute value, then uh, it depends on how you define those. So this is, you know, one potential solution, but actually... This depends on how we choose to interpret the polarity of edges. Is it something very important to preserve or is it something that you can overlook and say, okay, I'm just going to, you know, like basically take the absolute value of all those, you know, uh, connectivities. For example, I know in brain networks, we have negative correlations between different uh, regions, like, you know, and their neural activity are negatively correlated. So in the literature, what they do, they might just zero those. So they might make these connections completely disappear. So they're, in that case, they're changing the topology of the graph, right? Everything is changing when you're doing that. Or in some studies, what they do, they take the absolute value. So that's, so it depends, it totally depends on your graph, on your nodes, what is the problem you're solving, okay? Good. Now, yes? Can you separate Yes, very good. That's what I call, yeah, this is what uh, we used to, it's called cleaving the graph, okay? So cleaving, or separating the graph into two, into a union of two uh, subgraphs, one that is uh, positive, with positive weights, one with negative weights, right? And you process those independently, but now, this, the problem with that is that the centrality will change completely, because you're applying centrality to completely two different structures and topologies. You can do this, but it depends on the problem and it depends on the data and the meaning of the weights on your edges, okay? Good. Now, for directed graphs, there is directionality. Now, for in this case, the adjacency matrix is actually asymmetric. So if you perform eigenvector decomposition, you're going to have what we call a left and a right eigenvector, and this is how it's performed. So this is, you know, the typical one, the, um, you know, right eigenvector decomposition. And we have, for the left, we take the transpose, 
and this is how it is defined. Actually, it's very simple. You're just rotating your matrix. You're transposing it. So for the right to find the right eigenvector and the right eigenvalues, uh, uh, which should be exactly the same, especially for the eigenvector, because we are interested in the values inside the eigenvectors, we take A. For to find the left eigenvector, we take transpose of A. Okay, so this is if your matrix A is not symmetric, which means your graph is directed. So you have directionality in your graph. Now let's look at this. So here uh, we have a graph, and this is the adjacency matrix of the graph, right? And what we have done here, previously I only talked about degrees of a directed graph, degrees of undirected graph, uh, sorry, of an undirected graph. Uh, but we can also define in degree and out degree if we have a directed graph. So for example, what is the degree of uh, this node, of node 1, if we compute the in degree, like, sorry, the out degree, how many degrees, uh, how many uh, connections come out of this node? 3, right? This is the in uh, this is the out degree. But if we take the in degree, it's actually 0. It has no incoming connections, okay? Now, how we define this, uh, if we have a matrix AIJ, this edge actually is, goes from J to I. So, for example, we have a connection going from node 1 to node 2. So, from 1, we go to 2, so it means like uh, A to 1. So, it means 1 to 2 should be equal to 1. So, A to 1 is equal to 1, okay? So this is quite easy. So if you guys count in all the connections, so let's look at these connections. So we have here uh, 1 to 2, this one, 1 to 3, and 1 to 4. And then we have the, uh, the in degree. So for the in degree, for we have node 5 that receives two connections, two edges from node 2 and node 4. So this is from node 2 to 5 and 4 to 5. Okay, so this is how we define a directional adjacency matrix. And then when we take this matrix, we can easily find its left uh, eigenvector, its left eigenvector uh, centrality uh, with respect to out degree. So this is, you know, the, the left or the out uh, degree out eigenvector centrality takes into account only the uh, outcoming no, uh, outcoming connections. And then for the other one, for the right eigenvector centrality, it is computed with respect to in degree. Okay, great. Now, for this one, it depends actually, sometimes you say, you might ask now, okay, how do I know which one is important, in degree or out degree? Should I use, you know, profile my directed graph using the um, uh, the uh, in degree centrality or the out degree centrality or maybe both it actually fully depends on the problem okay that you're solving and the data you're using for example here what we have we have a uh, let's say we have Twitter users okay which one to, to use here to find the central nodes if you guys think about it with, without I give you the solution right shall we use the uh, right Agen centrality or the left Agen centrality. So for each user on Twitter, it has followers. It either is received, you know, like it's someone is following them or they are following someone else, right? So which one do you think is most important? It's not how many people you're following, but it's how many people are following you. So in this case, we are interested more in the uh, in degree, right? So in this case, someone with many followers will be more central than someone who follows many people, which, which means they have a high degree but still have a low in degree. So in this case, basically the, the in degree centrality, it is able to identify what we call central sources of information whose efferent, connect, um, efferent connections can influence many other nodes. So there is a difference here uh, between how do you pronounce? I think it's both are pronounced the same way. One, one with the E, one with an A. As for the out degree, it identifies sinks of information that receive a large amount of afferent connections. Okay, 
So one defines sinks in a graph. The other one defines sources or source nodes in a graph. So these are two different things, okay? And both are central and important to define. So looking at this one, just uh, before we take a short break. So here, the eigencentrality, so in this example, it also has problems. So you can see, now we moved from degree to eigencentrality, but every time we keep bumping into cases where this will not work out, basically. So in this case, let's see that we are interested uh, in nodes with incoming connections. So the uh, centrality, the incentrality of node VI is equal to zero because it has no incoming connections, right? Uh, so its D out is greater than zero, but its degree, its in degree is equal to zero. And the problem here is that with no incoming connections, the in degree of node VI is equal to zero. So this is quite problematic. This is because uh, we actually sum over all the nodes uh, which project 2i when computing uh, the centrality, and this is based on our definition. So here, in this example, uh, if we take the right eigenvectors, so we take, for example, the n degree. So for the n degree, we have no, this node actually has no con incoming uh, connections, right? So all of its... Uh, neighbors in matrix A are equal to zero, like it has no connections. We multiply it through the uh, right eigenvector and we get a zero. So if you guys look at this case, this node is still quite important, right? But because of all, all of its neighboring nodes, they have an n degree of zero, it tends to have also a zero centrality. And this is quite problematic. So there are... Uh, you know, multiple solutions to this problem, but we will look at this after the break, okay? <laughs>